My first impression of Icar, we walked in the door and there was the davening circle and the hand percussion and I stood in the doorway and I thought, oh hell no. My Icar moment is from one of my first services that I attended. It was the Friday night at Roxbury Park and I walked in, I heard a lot of Hebrew, which was familiar to me, but I also heard something that was really foreign, uh, which was drums. And I was pretty confused. Uh, I spent about 30 minutes of that service singing, but also pacing the back of the room, not sure what to do uh, with this combination of sounds. This is the first time for me when I've stood for, um, for the Amida, in which a rabbi has said, and if you don't believe, that's okay. Just pick a word, yeah. meditate on it. Wow. The story began that uh, we were looking for a spiritual home, couldn't find it anywhere. And my friend Daniel Sokatch said, you really have to meet our friend, my friend Rabbi Sharon Browse. So we ended up finding a Monday night at our house. Sharon came over and we, um, we started to talk about what we were hoping for for a Jewish community. And Sharon started to articulate this vision that was so moving and powerful. And it was, it was sort of a crazy magical evening. It sounds sort of dorky when I say it now, but it felt there was sort of this magic in the air where we were, um, there was just an excitement about what could, what could be. Even at that initial meeting, there was a kernel of what I thought was going to become kind of a powerful community, which has exceeded all expectations. Adam, in his typical way, wasn't speaking. You know, he was sort of taking it all in and um, sitting in the back drinking scotch or whatever it is that he does. And we, we walked upstairs and we get to the top of the stairs and he turns around and he looks at me and he says, our daughters have to grow up with that woman as our rabbi and we have to do whatever we can to make that happen. Walking in on the first day and seen my now fiance for the first time ever <laughs> on our first day of work uh, and thinking to myself, who is that? And finding out that he was the intern uh, rabbi at Icar was really surprising to me. It's been really beautiful to watch a community um, not only come together and support us, but celebrate with us. Icar helped me find my partner, I mean, <laughs> that's going to last with me for the rest of my life. Um, what, better feel <laughs> what better feeling than that? When everything was quiet, we were in the recovery room for the first time with her. Uh, the first thing that we did was put on Hillel Tigay's song, Hallelujah. It was it was the first quiet moment we had with our daughter that we had uh, prayed for and uh, really, really, really longed for for so long. <sighs> for me, it's to, it's to look out at my community, my ECAR community, and tell them the deepest, most personal things about my life and know that all those people support me and are there for me. There was a specific moment when um, we were sitting in groups and we were studying um, the Parashat and it was particularly resonant because it was about the prohibition um, on men sleeping with men. Um, and we were, parsing, um, we were parsing a text and everybody was contributing their kind of own you know, exegesis. And it's really extraordinary because each and every one of them had such an intellectual smart interpretation of the text. These were people who were deeply thinking, who were analytical, who were really engaged and cared. That's a community I want to be in. Our Ikar moment is probably the baby namings for both of our daughters. Um, we did the tradition where we don't announce their names until um, you do the baby naming at shul. And at that moment, you could actually hear everyone in the room get silent and, and sort of stop breathing for a minute until they heard us announce our name. Our lives sort of are intertwined with Icar in a deep way. This is our place. Um, my Icar moment is the first time that I delivered Hesed. I received an email um, 
that a couple had a baby and it was a couple who I didn't know and I decided to bake a lasagna, which is not something I was doing all the time. And I put in a lot of time and care in a way that kind of surprised me. And I drove over to their house. I had never met them before. And I knocked on the door, they opened the door. And I said, hi, I'm Julie. And I made this lasagna for you. I felt like I was in my own personal exodus. I was on a quest for freedom, which is why I had broken up my marriage and my writing partnership, but I was lost in the desert. And I went to the Shabbaton and told a lot of people my story and for the first time in probably two years, felt surrounded by love and community. And I met so many families that were blended families and single parent families and heteronormative families and gay families. And um, I no longer feel alone in the world. And I'm gonna try really hard not to cry. Somehow, whenever we spend time here, even if it takes every ounce of effort to physically get here, as soon as we arrive, it's like, oh, it feels instantly worth the effort. And it feels um, really energizing, really energizing. Neela is the last service of Yom Kippur. It's the last thing standing between you and, and your meal. Um, and in most places, people just try to rush through it because it's, you know, people just want to eat. And at Ikar, you actually stop and enjoy it and appreciate it. Um, and it's a, you know, it's a pretty amazing experience. It's like no place else I've ever been. So it's Friday night and the place is packed. It's this beautiful standing only service. And I see out of the corner of my eye that just at the entrance to the room is this guy in the community who I know is going through a really difficult period. And I'm so happy to see that he's here in services, finally come back after a long time away. And right in the middle of L'Chadudi, someone comes running over to me and says, oh my God, Rabbi, Rachel and Dan just got engaged. And, and I'm ecstatic, it's really like a dream come true, that the services, the intensity, the beauty, the power of the place is so big that a couple feels like they need to make this commitment to each other right in the middle of services. And so we have to celebrate, but I'm also so conscious of this guy who's standing at the door, who I love, whose heart is broken, and I'm just torn apart because I figure the more we celebrate, the more alienated he's gonna feel. What if he leaves and never comes back again? And, and I realized in this moment, like, we have to dance, we have to celebrate. It's something too amazing to not mark. And so L'Chadodi ends and I say, Rachel and Dan just got engaged. And people go nuts. They're, they're jumping, they're singing, they're dancing, everyone's celebrating. There's this talit all of a sudden that becomes a chuppah held over their heads. And my heart is sinking because I look back at the door and he's gone. And I think maybe he left, but then I notice that he stepped halfway into the room. And a minute later, he's actually right beside me, hand in the air, holding up one of the corners of the talit and he's dancing with pure joy and he's crying and it just feels to me like this moment of incredible beauty like this is what community's for it's actually about holding love and grief at the same moment holding loss and still celebrating for each other in the same breath and i felt like oh this is what ikar was created for